Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Awesome Build. It's November 2019, so I think it's only fitting that we do a Blade Runner build today. to do a Blade Runner related build for a long time and for a while I thought maybe I would make Deckard's gun but it's kind of been done by a lot of builders on YouTube so I thought well I love practical effects I love building miniatures and models and stuff like that so it'd be a great opportunity on how to build a miniature city and shoot it and make it look like a cool futuristic city like in Blade Runner. Um, but, of course, using a lot of cheap materials that you guys can find uh, lying around your house or at the dollar store or something like that, hardware store. So, I have a bunch of stuff laid out here of just random stuff that I think would make cool looking, interesting parts. So, of course, the classic ice cube tray, model parts, old um, pieces of plastic and stuff like that from, from bottles and containers, uh, electrical boxes that are super cheap, old model parts, and uh, toilet paper tubes, used up plastic containers, uh, some you know, different tubing and stuff. And I think we're gonna have, a, there's a, a bunch of those elements to kind of show the kind of texture around the, the city. And then we're gonna have a few key buildings that we're gonna build and dress up to kind of look futuristic -y. And what I'm gonna use to, to make the, the core of the building is foam board. Uh, it's very inexpensive, it's easy to cut and glue and stuff. We can just uh, cut out our, our, our basic shapes of the buildings and glue them together using some hot glue. Uh, you can buy them in white or you can also buy them in gray. It'll help in the, the painting process, I think. Um, Depending on the, the foam board that you buy, if you buy a really cheap foam board at the dollar store, it, it'll work great, but uh, when you go to paint it, it often is more absorbent and may warp and stuff like that, depending on what you paint it with. Um, so if you buy a little bit higher quality foam board that kind of takes the paint a little bit better, or if you buy it already in a black or a gray or something, depending on what you want to paint your buildings, uh, that'll kind of help out in the process. So I'm gonna map out on my foam board some basic building shapes that we'll use as our core and then we're gonna start gluing all these bits and pieces to it and make some futuristic buildings so all right let's just get to it So I got my basic shapes cut out, and now I want to add some windows to so we can light it from the inside, and it really kind of will help bring it to life. So you could go through and, and map out uh, where you want your windows to be and cut them out with your knife. It's going to be a little bit time consuming, so in order to kind of save time, um, and I recommend you could do this, this cheap dollar store basket. Um, already kind of has those window shapes, so I'm just going to cut out uh, an element out of each one of these and then cut out a piece of the basket and glue it to the inside so that uh, and I'll put a little diffusion on there and it'll act as the, the windows instead of having to like cut out each individual window, um, which you can do and I've done and uh, you know it still sells the effect, uh, but this is going to help us save a little bit of time.
this is our, our base building here. Obviously, it's pretty bland, uh, but we want to give it some some texture and some elements. You know, this is kind of uh, kind of Blade Runner city, so I'm going to put <clears throat> lots of external elements to it, um, like piping and and. Uh, and little antennas and stuff like that sticking off of it and some different uh, pieces of plastic and raised elements to give it a, a texture because then once we put it on set and, and smoke it up and light it you're not going to see a lot of the detail but when you light it you want to light it in a way that's kind of dramatic and so you'll see the different elements that might cast shadows or obviously give it a texture so um, you know this isn't going to hold up to much scrutiny uh, on a close-up, but as far as uh, you know, some background scenery and stuff like that, you're going to be flying through the city. If you want to get some shots like that, um, then you know, again, we're going to light it and smoke it so that it looks uh, kind of Blade Runnery. But yeah, but the fun part now is going to be finding all the different cool little elements to glue onto this and 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 make it look uh, futuristic. I don't want it to have, I don't want to have like too much like flat, flat surface because that kind of gives away the, the, the scale of it. It makes it look much smaller than it is. If you have a lot of little, little details, even just adding, you know, some of these elements, um, just to give it a little bit more texture and actually some of the more like the, the thinner parts and stuff like that, adding um, those different elements to kind of give it a little bit more of that. Uh, make it look larger than it is. Got these uh, little matchbox cars that I got at American Science and Surplus a couple years ago. They were like 50 cents a piece and they're kind of futuristic looking. So I think these painted and then added to, I might put a little flight deck kind of thing attached to there with these on there. And that'll also help give it some scale too. You know, if you kind of just see them in the background a little bit. Um, and it also kind of makes it look like it's much larger structure than it actually is but um, obviously again yeah the more detail you put into it the better it's gonna look um, but I think you know I'm just gonna add a few more elements and uh, before we get ready to paint because I want to get this kind of finished up but um, yeah I think once we smoke it and light it it'll look good but obviously yeah you can take as much time as you want you can put tons of detail in it and focus on it and uh, you know, spend weeks or months on it, just one aspect of it or one building, you know, you don't have to build three or four buildings in two days and, <laughs> and, and paint it and light it and everything. So, um, but you can do it super cheap. I mean, all this stuff is just, most of it is junk. You know, if you want to spend a few bucks on some foam core, which is not very expensive and uh, you can even use, you know, cardboard if you need to, cardboard boxes and stuff like that, which, you know, don't cost anything if you get them from, you know, packages or something, you, you know, get delivered or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I think this is a, a cheap and, a, you know, effective way to uh, make some practical miniature effects. <laughs> All right, so we're on day two of our Miniature City Blade Runner build. Um, I'm going to finish up some of the details on a few of the, the key components. We're going to have some of the background components be a little less detail, mostly for time. Again, if you guys have the time, I mean, you can spend as long as you want uh, making your miniature city or any kind of miniature, you know, thing you want to build. Um, you know, the more detail you put into it, the cooler it's going to look. 
Um, I'm just showing how you could build basically a, a miniature city set in just a couple of days with just junk you have kind of lying around the house or cheap materials. So um, I think it's still gonna be pretty effective once we smoke it and light it. But um, yeah, I'm gonna finish up some of the details and get to painting today. So let's just dive right in. All right, so obviously this is just a, a shampoo bottle, some yogurt cups glued together, some little model parts, a piece of tubing. And you know, you, you, you glue the different elements together and it already looks like something, you know, it, it's not fully recognizable as what it is, but um, you know, it's all very clean, it's very smooth. If it's just in the background or it's just an object uh, that you need kind of a cool silhouette of, you know, that kind of serves its purpose. But I want to add some detail, some texture to it. And again, to give it some scale, so I have some, some thin pieces of, uh, got some scrap wood here. And I'm just gonna just start gluing uh, different pieces here to it. And uh, some other different maybe model elements to, again, give it, to hide more of the obvious elements of the what it is, the shampoo bottle and, and the yogurt cups, and also to just uh, give it some added texture. Yeah, cable ties or zip ties um, are always a, a really great actually resource to you for little detail stuff like this. Um, I mean, they're relatively inexpensive. You can buy a big bag. I also, when I use them, I just, I save the extra pieces. Um, and uh, they usually have kind of, that, they have that nice, uh, rib texture and uh, so when you glue it to something it, it gives it that little bit of detail that kind of uh, well, helps sell whatever piece you're, you're dressing up. Right now I'm just using uh, Loctite super glue. I also have uh, Berwin's Instacure which is an excellent uh, model glue and plastic glue. It bonds, it really does almost instantly. Um, but if you're gonna use just a regular super glue, I suggest using an accelerant uh, to kind of help speed the process along once you kind of get the, the piece sort of situated where you want it to be. Um, yeah, just give it a spritz of that and then you're good to go. All right. So already just with those little added pieces, kind of gives it a little something. Um, to help hide the fact that it's, it's just some bottles and containers. As you can see with this paper towel tube, you know, I just have straws, little bits of model parts, little electronic parts, pieces of wood, wire, all that stuff, uh, just kind of randomly glued on there. But then once I paint it all, um, you know, it'll look like all that detail will really pop, you know? Um, but yeah, it's all just made from bits of junk. So something like this rooftop piece is gonna go on top of one of my buildings, but it's just a few empty trays stacked on top of each other with some different uh, electronic components and model parts and different little toy pieces. Um, again, we'll paint it up and dress it up and yeah, it'll be the top of a building. It's even got some little smokestacks and stuff like that. <laughs> All right, so I'm at a point now where I really just need to start painting. <laughs> but it's very easy to get kind of caught up and just keep adding detail after detail after detail. Uh, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, oh, I want to add a piece here, or I add a piece there. Um, so I, I know I've said this many times, but you know, obviously if you're gonna be building uh, a miniature that's gonna be shot under a lot of scrutiny and you're gonna need some close-ups of buildings and stuff like that, then obviously you're gonna have to go in and make meticulous detail in order to sell it as a real like model of a building, a real building. But we're gonna be filming it as a sci-fi city, so you don't have to adhere to certain contemporary elements of, you know, uh, modern buildings, I guess, you know. Um, and the whole kind of idea in Blade Runner is these old buildings that have had lots of things attached to them, all the ductwork is kind of running outside of the building and stuff, and all these are kind of like older buildings that have been retrofitted, and then new buildings and stuff like that kind of mixed in. So um, adding all these different kind of components and elements and the piping and the tubing and stuff like that and all the straws and stuff like that really gives it uh, that character and that life. But 
I think once we uh, film it, it'll be cool for like background plates and stuff like that. Or if we want to be passing through, you know, with a kind of a moving camera shot, like we're flying through the city and we're just going to be passing the buildings, then I think it's going to hold up uh, relatively well. All right. So as you can see, really, I'm just adding pieces to this very randomly. Um, I didn't have a, a plan, you know, I was like, I'm going to build some basic building structures and then I'm going to glue all these different parts on. It's kind of an organic process the way I'm doing it. I'm not planning it out necessarily, but I'm taking different objects and I'm like, ah, oh, this might work here, this might work there. Um, it is random, but at the same time, you also want to keep in mind that it has to kind of make sense in whatever world that you're kind of creating. And what I mean by that is it, it, it is just a process of just gluing all these different parts on. But there has to be um, a, an order to it so that it doesn't look so out of place or as random. Like you literally just are gluing things and sticking them on and there's no rhyme or reason. Um, especially when you're adding, you have, you have a lot of these shapes, you know, you have with uh, very geometric shapes. You wanna make sure that they follow a similar line you don't want them to have like too crooked or, you know, just kind of randomly stuck on there. Uh, same thing with you're doing anything with like the tubes or anything like that. Make sure the tubes go somewhere. Uh, otherwise, it's going to give away that it's just a straw glued to a piece of cardboard or a piece of foam board, you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, make sure that they, they go to something and then it looks like that tube or that hose or that those wires uh, have a function and they have a purpose and they're doing something. Um, even if it's just, you know, nothing, but, you know, <laughs> um, but yeah, just so that, you know, you, you're giving off the, the impression that all of these things work in some way in this world that you're creating. Um, and especially when you're doing like sci-fi stuff like this, it, it is very random and you can kind of make it up. If you're going to build buildings that look very contemporary or something that when you want to look realistic like it exists in the world we live in today, um, then definitely you have to take into account like how vents and stuff like that are put in buildings or faucet or um, faucets or whatever and stuff like that and, and duct work and um, you know drainage and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know little balconies and you know catwalks and stuff like that. Um, fire escapes, all of those things um, make it a little bit more difficult when you're, you, you're trying to create something that looks hyper-realistic. In this case, we're really just taking junk, you know, uh, toy, you know, pieces and model parts and plastic containers and just gluing it on and trying to make it look like something else. Um, you know, like these plastic uh, berry containers, they're like raspberry containers and blueberry containers. Uh, they have a cool shape to them, so once they're painted, they look interesting. They give it a cool kind of structural shape, and then when you just glue some, you know, plastic pieces on it, it doesn't look like a plastic container. It looks like some kind of, you know, structure in, on a building. All right, so I created another little rooftop piece, and um, most of it is it's the same process. I mean, I just have a little measuring cup here added for the the top with some bits and pieces kind of glued onto it. Some little doors and, you know, again, little bits and pieces of plastic and model parts that kind of help, you know, make it look uh, a little busy, a little like there's something on there. Uh, but I added this little fence, which I think is gonna add uh, an extra element to it. And all it is is wire mesh. I have a big bundle of this wire mesh that was uh, donated to me. Uh, you know, people don't want stuff. Uh, they just get rid of it. They ask me if I want it, and I take it. So, um, but yeah, it just it's a kind of a neat little easy. Just I just cut a strip out of the the wire mesh, and it's a little fence. Um, I think once it's all painted, then and on there, again, it's really going to help sell the 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 illusion of scale. Um, so if you see if you know the fence is that big, then the you know you get an idea that a person is only you know, maybe this much bigger, you know, <clears throat> so. All right, so I'm just going to start painting and I'm just going to be using some Krylon Ultra Flat Gray. I'm going to go over all the buildings with that and then I'm going to do light passes with some of uh, some flat black, 
uh, maybe a little bit of semi-gloss, some darker colors, black and blues and greens and browns and reds and stuff like that, just lightly over certain areas just to make it kind of pop so it's not all just one color, uh, but I do want it to all be very uh, gray and dark or whatever. So, um, but we are gonna be adding lights to it and stuff like that too. So when those certain lights kind of are, are on and activated, it's gonna react to certain colors and stuff like that that are on the piece. Um, it's not gonna be super noticeable, but it'll be subtle then enough, I think, to kind of sell the illusion that everything isn't exactly just one color. So, anyway. So that's how you can build your very own Blade Runner style cityscape using foul materials. Um, foul materials and a little bit of spray paint. <laughs> Which really all I used was that flat gray spray paint and some black and a little bit of, you know, I had a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, um, but you don't even necessarily need it. I mean, really the, the gray and the black kind of sell the illusion well enough. So you don't need a big budget to make some cool practical effects. Just need to be creative with some found items you probably have lying around, some junk you might be able to find, or people might be able to donate. Uh, old toys and bits and pieces of models and broken parts of electronics, and a little bit of foam board, and some cardboard, and yeah, this is what you can create. So I hope this inspires you guys to go out and build your own miniature city. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram at jimbrokenrealpics where I'll have some more photos of this particular build, some of the behind the scenes and stuff like that, some of the progression of the buildings being built, as well as other builds and some of my just daily thoughts or daily pictures from the shop. And look out for a possible short subject, Blade Runner themed uh, short film. I really am looking forward to lighting this set and shooting some stuff and seeing how it all comes together. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.